Today I'm going to be covering proof by contradiction. Now this video is self-contained but it is number two in a series that I'm making on my channel on proofs and numbers and sets, basically just teaching you about some cool mathematics. So if you're interested then check out the series after watching this video. But without further ado, let's dive straight into it. Okay, so as you can see, we're gonna be doing some proof by contradiction. Now I realized in the last video, I kind of labeled them like 1.2 and so on, but just for the sake of the fact that all of this is gonna be self-contained, I'm just gonna remove the labeling for now and uh, yeah, just dive straight in. So we have proof by contradiction. Now, as the name suggests, we're gonna be contradicting something. And this is a really beautiful way in mathematics that you can basically take any statement, so any claim, like there are infinitely many primes or the sky is blue, like I said in my last video, but you can, yeah, you can take a statement and you can start by saying, well, let's, let's assume this is true and then we're gonna contradict it. And if you can contradict it, then you can essentially prove that it's not true. Uh, and to show you what I mean by that, we're gonna formulate a proof. Um, but first I'm just gonna write some things down just, just for reference. So we, we kind of, if you wanna come back to this video, then you know, you know what we're talking about. So proof by contradiction. And I'm gonna just write this down. I'm gonna say proof, proof by contradiction is a proof technique that is based on if something leads to a contradiction, it can't be true. And if so, the opposite must be true. So that's kind of just what I said, really, um, is, you know, you, you can start by saying, if, if something that you're, you're, you're saying is actually, you know, you can contradict it, then essentially the thing that you started with is false. And uh, yeah, let's, let's jump straight into an example because I absolutely love this example. And I do actually have a video on my channel talking about the history behind this, uh, a little bit about the history behind this. So the claim that we're gonna make so like I mentioned in the first video, but again, self-contained, you don't need to worry too much. When we start formulating a proof, we put a claim. Uh, the claim is root two is irrational. So it's an irrational number. Now for the proof, what we're gonna do is we're gonna suppose that actually root two, it's not rational, it's not irrational, it's actually rational. So we're gonna say, let's suppose that the square root of two is a rational number. Cool, so that's kind of our contradict. This, this is the setup for the contradiction here. So what we're gonna be doing is, we're gonna start by saying, well, let's, let's suppose that root two is a rational number, and then we're gonna get some sort of contradiction later on, which will contradict the fact that root two is, an ir it is a rational number. And therefore, because it's saying it's rational and we're disproving it and we're contradicting it, it's technically, irrational. Now I'll explain all this as we go. It might sound a little bit complicated, but let's start with the proof. So we've, we've assumed that root two is a rational number. And so with that, what we can say is, well, we can write it in this form. So let's suppose this and say then that root two equals a divided by b, where a and b, a, b are whole numbers. And they're not equal to zero. Now there's some, there's kind of like fancy notation you can use for that, but because this is a beginner's course, we're gonna just, yeah, say the whole numbers and they're not equal to zero. But we're not just gonna assume that it can be written in this form. We're also gonna say, let's assume, let's also assume that A divided by B is in its lowest terms. And what that means is you cannot reduce this fraction anymore so you cannot so like how say if you had um let me think uh two over four you can reduce that because two over four would well i'll write here say if you're two over four well that can be divided by two so that is actually a half and you can't reduce that any further so that's what it means by lowest terms you, you cannot you, know, you cannot reduce it any further now what we'll do is we'll do some kind of nice maths with this statement that we have here so I'm going to star this and I'm going to just call this equation star. So I can say from star then, well, let's square. The kind of obvious thing we can do is we can square both sides. So square this, square this to get an expression. So from star, if we square, we'll get 
2 equals a squared divided by b squared. And we can multiply this b squared up. So we end up with, well, 2b squared equals a squared. Now in mathematics, if a number is like, say a variable in this case, b squared, if we have a squared equals b squared, but this b squared is multiplied by a two, a factor of two, this by definition in mathematics means it's even. Now, we, I did a video in video number one that kind of talks a little bit about that, but that's kind of something that's, that's true in, in mathematics, that if you have, you know, k for, which is an integer, um, then 2k is even and 2k plus one is odd. And that's just kind of standard in mathematics. So we can say from this, well, therefore a squared must be even. So let's say thus a squared is even. So we have that a squared is even. Now I'm going to say by kind of video three, a is also even. Um, and the reason for that is because in the next video, I show you this kind of, you know, I prove that if a squared is even, then a must also be even. So I'm going to omit it from this, but please note that here we obviously need to have, um, you need to prove that this holds, that if a squared is even, then a is also even. But I'm saving that for video three, just so, yeah, you're enticed to go watch it. So we'll, uh, we'll leave that as it is. So we know that a is therefore also even. So if a is even, we can write it, like I mentioned, as a is 2k for k integer. Okay, so given that we have this new formula for a, well, let's just substitute it back into here. So we have, so sub in, sub in to star. Well, then we have that the square root of 2 is 2k over b. We can square that again. So square, we have 2 is 4k squared over b squared, which implies that 2b squared is 4k squared, which implies that b squared is 2k squared. And again, by definition, so by definition, this means that b squared is an even number. So we have that b squared is an even number. And again, by video three, which is what you're going to be watching in the next video, we can also, thus I'll put by video three, we can also say that b is even. Okay, but what we've just shown is that a is even. So a is even, b is even, but we said that a, b had to be in its lowest terms. But clearly it's not, because if a and b are both even, then a divided by b can be divided by 2, which means it's not in its lowest terms. So I'm going to write that down, I'm going to say, but we said a divided by b is in its lowest terms, but we've just shown that a and b are even. So we can say, therefore, contradiction. It contradicts. Now, we've obviously got this contradiction, and this contradiction itself has come from the fact that we've said that a uh, that the square root of 2 is rational. So because we now have this contradiction, we can say, well, therefore, by proof by contradiction, actually, the square root of 2 isn't rational, it's irrational. So I'm going to say, therefore, contradiction, even though I've said that already <laughs> like three times, therefore, contradiction, root 2 is irrational. Beautiful. Now, obviously, like I mentioned, there's a, there's a slight little bit of proof that you need to do, which I'm going to be showing you in the following video. But 
I, yeah, I, I really like this method of proving things. I think it's something that when I was at uni and I've, whenever I saw like a proof by contradiction example come up, I was so excited because you kind of need to think a lot about what it is you're going to say is true or what, what you think you're going to formulate as true and then how you're going to show that it's actually not true and it, it leads to something that, that's contradictory. So yeah, I, uh, I absolutely love it. And I think something that's really interesting about this proof itself is that basically one of Pythagoras's followers called Hippasus, I believe, he, the legend has it is that he came to you know Pythagoras and the Pythagoreans and said, I've shown that the square root of two is irrational, but obviously they all believed in rational numbers and they thought that this was blasphemy, you know, against the, the Pythagoreans. And apparently the legend has it was that he was thrown overboard by showing this. And that's why I always love talking about this, <laughs> this proof itself, because um, it has like an interesting backstory to it. But that is the video. Like I mentioned in the next video, I'm going to be talking about how we can prove that if a squared is even, then a must also be even. So make sure you tune into that video. Thank you so much for watching.